The Morgan Report with David Morgan. David Morgan with you with the weekly perspective for the week ending 28 December 2018. Well, this will be the last update or weekly perspective, obviously. I wanted to review the year end basically on the metals, and I'm going to focus pretty much on gold and silver. This will probably be a shorter podcast than the usual. We're looking across the board. Aluminum for the year was off. These are approximations. I didn't do it for today, so these are going to be off slightly. But aluminum was off 15% for the year. Cobalt, which was a big winner, a lot of talk about it, was off 27% for the year. Copper was down about 15% for the year. Lead, about 23% off for the year. Molybdenum was up 62% for the year. Nickel off 12% for the year. Tin was basically flat, off about 2% for the year. And zinc was off 22% for the year. And by the way, our, our zinc call, calling them on uh, the zinc move, we caught it. We got a double on our stock and uh, we got out of it. So it pays attention to pay attention. Right now, um, gold is about flat um, as I'm making this. Palladium's up 17% for the year. Platinum's off about 15% for the year. And silver's off about 14% for the year. Again, I am doing this uh, based on last week's results, not on the today's results. And on the indexes, the HUI was off about 20% for the year. XAU about the same 20% for the year. And the US dollar, as much as it's been um, talked about, you'd think it was really rocketing up this year, but it's only up about 5% for the year. Crude off about 14% for the year, heating oil off about 10%, natural gas up 25%, and gasoline off about 20%. So that will take us through uh, energy and the metals. Moving on to the first article from Yahoo Finance, gold set for best month in two years as angst fuels, hate, hate, should say, in my view, safe haven demand. And this is true. We've seen gold do a nice job here at the end of the year, which is actually a seasonality that used to hold most of the time. The last few years, looking back about five or six, it's actually sold off quite a bit into the end of the year a few times uh, and then started a rally somewhere in January. Regardless, stronger at the end of the year. Main reason, as all listeners to the Morgan Report updates know, that gold is the most negatively correlated asset to the stock market, not the dollar, although it is negatively correlated to the dollar as well. So money that's moving out of the stock market, the smart money, it's going to get in the gold market early, and that's now. 2019 should be a good year for the metals, especially the precious metals. And I'll be writing about the metals across the board in our Upcoming January issue, we'll probably individually talk about almost every one of them that I just read off and what our projections are for 2019. Having said that, let's get into the next article. And of course, Zero Hedge. Everyone knows that uh, almost every week I will pick an article from here. And the reason being is they do such an excellent job. So, Zero Hedge, Russia, central bank buying gold on the international market, question mark. For a number of years now, and even more so during 2018, the Central Bank of the Russian Federation, the Bank of Russia, has remained in the spotlight as one of the world's largest gold buyers, each month adding substantial amounts of gold to its monetary gold stockpiles. Having bought another 37.3 tons of gold, which is about 1.2 million ounces during November, and the Bank of Russia now holds 2103, 2,103 tons of monetary gold. On a year-to-date basis for the 11 months, from January to November inclusive, the Russian central bank has added an incredible 264.3 tons of gold to its monetary, monetary reserve assets. Well, anyone that follows me or anyone in this genre certainly knows that Russia and China have continually added to their gold positions in physical, and it continues unabated. I think this will obviously continue for some time, but we could reach a tipping point somewhere where it's hard to deliver. Time will tell. I'm not forecasting that for next year. I'm just stating that um, obviously gold is moving where it should to people that understand its monetary role and people that don't. Like, And I'm not talking about the people. I'm talking about their purported leaders, such as the UK and Canada basically depleted all their gold reserves, certainly not on a basis of popularity or knowledge, but a basis of uh, 
let's just say, political ex expedience. And this is an interesting article from Science Magazine, and I'm going to blow his name, but meet, and I'll just say, V. Schmiel, the man who quietly shaped how the world thinks about energy. I'm not going to read this to you, but I'm going to note that uh, I have started an energy letter, and it's going to address a lot of these issues that are in this article and what he's basically saying here. Give some background and talks about his career, but basically he's questioning a lot of these renewables, if they're really renewable or not, and what the payback is on some of the things like solar, as an example. One of the things I looked at quite early on is, well, if we all, you know, if the world went to solar, would there be enough silver in the world for the world to go so to solar? And the answer is not even close. So he's basically questioning a lot of things that um, others are not questioning quite in the same way. My good friend Steve St. Angelo certainly does with energy return on energy invested. It takes you uh, X barrels of oil equivalent or X barrels of oil or the equivalent, uh, substitute coal or whatever, and you get back X plus 20%. <clears throat> certainly you're making a profit in energy terms, but not a huge profit. And this is the problem that many people don't understand about renewables why wind and solar are nice adjuncts, but certainly aren't going to solve the problem. Why wind power looks great on paper, but these things do wear out. And the traditional belief is they're about 30 years. I have some inside sources. It's probably not that high. And again, it goes on and on. So this is something that's critically important, and that is energy. Uh, the Energy Stock Profits newsletter will start in January. It's not for everybody, but I will be sending out the opportunity for those that are interested in uh, participating in that economic newsletter based on all aspects of energy, not just oil and gas, but all these alternatives. We'll be examining them carefully and basically keeping you away from things that might sound too good to be true because in most cases they are. And basically a lot of the best investments I've ever made are ones that I did not make. In other words, I stayed away from the hype. So I think that's going to go ahead and end it pretty much for this year. Stock markets on a decline, bond markets, Interest rates inverted, as we all know, yield curve <clears throat> to two to five year. And gold is starting to move up. Silver broke out. And it's maintaining. And a lot, I think, will change next year. I think we're going to see a big shift. Look for lots of new things in the new year. Cybersecurity, robotics, more truth bombs, a lot of political divide probably getting worse than it is already, unfortunately. And a lot more people waking up to the reality that we all live in, which a lot of these markets are not markets, they're just manipulations, and that really there isn't the cavalry out there to save you, that you're going to have, be, have to be more self-reliant if you're really going to get through the extremely interesting times that we all face. So I'll leave it at that. Wish everyone a happy new year, and <clears throat> I will be back with you for the next weekly update in 2019. Up to date on everything in the global economy, the currency crisis, cryptocurrencies, and the hard asset sectors such as gold and silver. Sign up for our free weekly perspective updates at themorganreport.com. While you are there, be sure to check out our membership services where you can get expert trading recommendations and read analysis for just $50 per month. The Morgan Report is a world class publication aimed at helping you secure your financial independence, regardless of the economic outlook. It's the knowledge you need to protect and grow your wealth.